people we are back part two so uh we still got a nice handful of comments and uh, of course i'll probably have uh, another part at the end after these comments for additional comments because of course you guys can still go to that video and comment and you can also comment in this video and i will get to your guys' comments as well because uh yeah we are going to do this balance prediction uh part one for me it will be on the first of june and then my part two will be a Pretty much right after we get the OCGs list. Like, as soon as we get the OCGs list, I will have that part two up as soon as possible. Because, like I said, I think that when it comes to this upcoming list, especially with Cluster Worlds, just like when we did the April list, I think that we're simply just going to look at OCG and be like, alright, you guys did a lot of uh, things that are pretty good. Let's go ahead and copy that once again. You know, like I said, when it comes to the top decks in the meta, uh, we're getting some similarities, so, you know, it's simply just easier just to copy off of OCG, just like what we did in this April list, to an extent. So, uh, I said, uh, if some decks get hit in OCG, then at least we'll have precedence when it comes to them. So, today, we, uh, hopefully are gonna get through, at least want to get through, like, two or three uh, comments because now we're starting to get into the people's actual like lists and stuff So hopefully we can get through all that the video won't be too long I won't be too long-winded and uh, then we can pick up with part three tomorrow So today we are starting off with Omega Chaos. So you guys know Omega Chaos. He's one of my tag partners and um, You know they have their own channel. So uh, the link will of course be in the description, but you know their link is always in every description so uh, it really won't change anything, but of course they took the time to go ahead and put down uh, their prediction list. So I'm going to go over their list and uh, give my opinions about their list and, I don't know, hopefully some of ours will sync up and, you know, go ahead and uh, uh, hopefully uh, if I missed anything, then uh, they can help me out. So starting it off, uh, they said, uh, my rough prediction list. They said, ban, probably nothing, dot, dot, dot. Yeah, you know, I don't blame you. There's only one card that's worthy of being banned right now and... You know, that's obviously a releaser, but uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it doesn't get banned, you know. It's not like it wasn't causing problems um, last list, you know, last format, when the Necklace was still the top deck. And, uh, you know, they went ahead and hit Vanity's the one thing, then when they looked over and they saw release the various like, nah, that's fine, that's fine. So, like I said, it's still a problem card. We developed more outs to it, but... You know, it's still just a problem card because if you don't get those outs, then you're just pretty much locked out of duel, you know. And if you can't special summon, you're going to have a bad time. And just, uh, that's just how Yu-Gi-Oh is. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so, uh, like I said, uh, should it really still be banned? Yes. Will it be banned? Probably not. But, you know, if it doesn't, then don't be surprised, you know. Konami's not usually ones to go ahead and uh, ban cards. I mean, look how long it took them to ban the Dragon Rollers, and, you know, Snatch Deal was obviously on their radar, because that was just dumb. But, uh, you know, if there's any card that should be banned this time, it should be released, and we had a list where nothing's got banned, so uh, I wouldn't be surprised, but, yeah, release her. All right, next, uh, they have Limited Bronic. All right, and uh, they also put uh, an explanation, too, so let me go ahead and read that. So, they say, I think Konami is going to hit Necros, Consistency, just like they also said, yep, this hit would hurt the consistency of that deck pretty significantly. I personally would just like Trisula to be banned because it's a, it's the actual problem card. Because that is not what Konami would do most likely. Uh, I really don't feel like Trish is the problem card. I mean, it's, that's a nice card from the hat, but I don't really feel like it's the problem card. You know, I've seen uh, Necros duel and win plenty of times without even summoning Trish, and, you know, Trish was really the hot tip, don't you think that they'd be running multiple Trishes and getting you and Trish multiple times, like I said, they run, like, one to two at the most, so, it's not really Trish, like I said, lowering the consistency of the deck is definitely the correct hit when it comes to Necros, because the reason why Necros are the top deck is because they are the most consistent deck, so if you get, if you go ahead and hit the consistency of Necros, then, uh, the deck will start to fall, so, uh, like I said, uh, we already have set precedence of OCG hitting Browning down to one. We had it at two over here, so, um, you know, it'd be kind of easy to just go ahead and move it down to one, just like the OCG, so, yeah. All right, uh, next I have uh, Necros of Unicorn. Same reason as Browning, card that consistency of decks, and it can't recycle cards as easily anymore. It also loses the rank four abilities and consistent to general lock plays uh, with this hit. Yeah, I, you know, I can see that as well. Uh, 
Jersey the LCG also has Unicorn at one. It's actually one of the first hits was Unicorn at one. Because, you know, the Unicorn with the Herald, uh, you know, make that level chain, you know. Uh, definitely, if you go ahead and hit Unicorn at one, you can't do that as much. But really, uh, you really only need one low level chain to send that one to gem. So, uh, you know, with the high consistency that Necros currently have, they can simply just search that one Unicorn and then go ahead and use. So, I think you'd have to probably maybe hit the other mirror as well, uh, with a Collider or something, the one that you can summon from the extra deck. Uh, but probably not. The card's still at three, even in an LCG. Uh, the hit cycle, the revival one, which is understandable. But yeah, uh, I can totally see them just go ahead with set precedence of the OCGs just hitting Unicorn as well. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna agree with that. Uh, next, they have Elsajal Construct. The main boss monster, the Shadal deck, was limited in the OCG well before it got banned there. Uh, this way, they won't be able to spam Constructs constantly, but have to rely on other fusions. I personally would like for uh, Shadal Fusion to be limited, but that's probably not going to happen. I agree, Shadal Fusion is just... Shadal Fusion is a dumb one, but uh, like I said, if you're not going to hit Fusion, uh, then go ahead, copy off the OCG. Uh, like I said, I'm not sure. I was thinking, like, are they going to ban Construct like they did in the OCG? I think I think the OCG on that front kind of took it to the extreme because, you know, Shadal's can't even play without Construct. They at least need one. So I, I am in agreement as well. Construct should be limited to one. Uh, it's kind of, like I said, it's kind of hard to hit extra deck monsters because, you know, you always have access to them. So, you know, it's not like you can go ahead and just hit them just to lower the consistency. But in this sense, by hitting Construct to 1, you're lowering the amount of out. So it's not like every single time you summon extra deck monster, you're like, all right, we'll show off you in Construct, show off you in Construct, show off you in Construct, you know. So, uh, you know, they only get one Construct, use it wisely, you know. So I have an agreement. Uh, also, copy off the SNG, I also think that um, El Shadal Fusion will probably be limited to one as well. Uh, I think Construct and El Shadal Fusion will be fine hits to Shadals uh, this time. Uh, lower the consistency and lower the fusion rates. They don't want to hit, uh, you know, uh, Shadal Fusion, then go ahead and hit El Shadal Fusion, I guess, to just lower the amount of uh, uh, finishing kills, you know, because of course El Shadal Fusion is a quick play spell, so they can go like attack, attack. You know, then in the same battle phase, they just go, you know, a shell fusion fuse attack again, game. So I guess uh, maybe they thought that was a much b bigger problem than um, simply just regular shadow fusion, where it's like, oh, you have an extra monster? Let me just use resources for my deck and go fucking plus. So I don't know. Uh, like I said, personally, I would have hit Shadal Fusion, but they're probably not, so Construct Run and El Shadal Fusion 1 will be suffice hits for this, unless um, OCG does something otherwise. Uh, Wind is not really a problem, uh, uh, Sh uh, Shikinaga is fine, uh, I'm not really sure about Mathematician and Curry Bandit, they haven't been as prominent uh, here in the TCG as much as the OCG, kind of mathematician, but still just not like, oh wow, you know. At first I was thinking, but now, you know, uh, Shadal's sending effects aren't as good as their flip effects. Their flip effects are much better, so, uh, you know, uh, if you want to go ahead and go, like, you know, mathematician send something, and more power to you. So, like I said, I think Construct and El Shadal Fusion will be enough. Alright, so next, uh, my Chaos, they have a uh, uh, Scout. Uh, despite them getting a massive hit and the previous list accounts are still overpowered, this card is uh, the actual problem in the deck gives you nearly free advantage every turn, unless of course you have a response to it. So I am in agreement. Uh, we already have precedence of Scout being already on the list, and when it comes to uh, cards, they rather hit cards on the list and put new cards on. Scout's already on the list, and clearly, even with Klee's massive hits of Scout to two, Sacrifice to one, and uh, you know Skill Drain and Vanity to one. Uh, the deck is still arguably one of the top three decks. You know, even when it, it's still Necros, 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 you will always find one Klee, and Klee's are still a really good deck. You know, and the reason why they're powerful is definitely Scout. If you're gonna point fingers at anybody, it's Scout. And now they hit Scout to the lower the consistency, but of course with triple, um, you know, uh, Summoner's Art, they can still and just drawing Scout naturally. Uh, they can still get to the scout, and once they get access to that scout, you know, the duel is on. So I think hitting scout down to one, lowering the consistency, giving you one scout would be totally fine. You know, you still have, you know, your eyed eyes, and you still have your sacrifice, you still have your triple summoners art, you still want to do it. Of course, we're not going to hit summoners art, because that would, 
that card is permanent ignites of course so um, instead of hitting the generic card in the sense that will help other decks such as you know roto when it comes to telenites we'll go ahead and just hit scout uh down to one and then like i said even with telenites we can go ahead and hit the nev down to one necklace if telenites uh prove to be uh still really consistent and persistent um you know with uh worlds coming up and uh, if our hit, if my hit is correct and we hit construct one and Deneb to two and then Roto would be at one, maybe that would be enough for them not to do anything in worlds. But of course, if they do something in worlds, and they can just get hit again. And then of course, Deneb going down to one would probably be like the first thing to look at. So uh, yeah, I am agreement scout. All right, next they have uh, Nova Alpha. Uh, they state something has to be hit in Tower Knights as well. The Konami in the Count Trap is most likely it's just too good for that deck. Like I said, I already talked about Nova. It's a balanced card. You know, there is nothing wrong with Nova. It's not like you can search for anything. And like I said, you can't just go ahead and hit every single Tower Trap in every single deck. You know, if they get Nova, then hey, more power to them. But you know, when you really sit down and you think about it, is it really Nova that's fucking you up in in the duel? Like no. Definitely not, you know, most of the time it's that trigger that keeps bouncing all your extra deck shit, like every single time you go into like some kind of extra deck monster, some kind of push, they simply just make a trip, and while some cards may go back to your hand, them extra deck monsters, you're going to be nagging on them, so, like I said, I'm pointing to bring back trips, and then, once again, just lower the consistency, because apparently, Konami likes to go out to the consistency, uh, the only precedence we have, the counter trap, like I said, is in front of the barrier, but that card is searchable, so, uh, you really can't compare, because then, you know, what are you going to go after next, are you going to go after, you know, secret move, are you going to go after the you know Zephyr counter trap. Like I said, um, when it comes to counter traps, you know theme decks of ar of archetypes. Generally, that's not what they go after. They go after the consistency of the deck. So um, I don't think it's gonna be Nova. I think it's gonna be Triv. But hey, if it's Nova, then it's Nova. All right. Next on Mega Chaos, they have uh, Semi Limited. Semi Limited. They have uh, uh, Altair. They say. Uh, this card in Deneb makes a self-interacting loop, which is completely insane. It makes this card different from other cards that enable one card rank 4 plays. This would hit, uh, hurt the stamina of the Telenite deck, and it would actually lie more on recycling cards like Sirius. Uh, I was thinking this card at first, you know, back when Telenites were still leading to them, like, you can't hit Deneb, because, you know, they only really need one Deneb. Uh, but Altair, you know, multiple Altairs, I can totally understand that. Uh, the only problem with me trying to think Altair is that it seems like they're kind of letting up when it comes to those one card rank four plays. I mean, you know, Wolfbark at three and, uh, you know, Noden coming out. It seems like they're kind of letting up on that. Now, of course, you really can't compare this because of Deneb. Like I said, it's Deneb's fault. If, you know, if Deneb was out of the picture and it's just Altair and all you did was Altair summon something else, you wouldn't be plusing. You know, it's the fact that Altair, it's the fact that Deneb gets the effect from someone like Altair, that's the problem. So if you can lower the consistency of Deneb, like I said, we'll hit it at 2, see what it does. But if we hit it at 1, and we have Deneb at 1, and you simply just go into like, you know, a Rhapsody and Bizarre can banish that Deneb, then, you know, whatever they grab back with Altair, you know. Uh, now, of course, when it comes to Deneb at 2 and at 1, you still have cards to grab it, you know. You still have Rota, and you still have, you know, like Unuk being able to send it. But uh, you'd have to have Unuk, one of the revival cards, and you know you may not always get Rose, just like you may not always get Summoner's Heart and Cleaves if we drop Scout down to one. So like I said, hitting the consistency is uh, key. And like I said, this is the first hit for Teller Knights. Um, so like I said, I say trip to one to W two, and that's pretty much it. And uh, like I said, I have no precedence. You know, usually if you know if Wolf Bark was still hit, then definitely I would say Altair. But with the Wolf Bark being freed up like that, I, you know, I just can't right now point a finger at Altair just because I have no precedence of it because it simply seems like especially with Wolf Bark at 3 and Noden come out they just don't really care about these one card rank 4 engine plays anymore so alright so uh next card that they have some limited is Sacrifice so uh, they say well if uh, Clear Force Scout is limited then this card can go to 2 I think uh, them switching places would be appropriate I have no precedence on this uh, like I said uh, just because Scout gets hit to uh, one doesn't mean that Sacrifice isn't a powerful card, even at one. So, uh, I would probably, personally, I would probably still keep this card at one, because it's just really, it's too powerful for an equip card. Uh, but, uh, I'm not really a big fan of switching cards or giving you something. Uh, that seems more like an OCG thing. They're like, hey, uh, you know, because they had what? They had, uh, Manju and Sanju at one, but then Bronic was a two, but then they went, alright, Bronic at one. Manju to 2 and then send you to 3 so you know switching cards seems like more of an OCG thing uh, generally when it comes to TCG they just hit hit continue hitting and uh, 
uh, there really doesn't seem like uh, they're gonna allow this one to go. You know, what's the point of hitting Cleese and then giving Cleese something? Like, uh, especially with no new Cleese support, Cleese being done, not being the new uh, money making cash cow anymore, it, it would be much simpler just to go ahead and hit Cleese to the point of being done, you know, and uh, moving on. So. Uh, moving on to the next pendulum deck, so I probably keep. I probably think that sacrifice will probably stay at one. Uh, you know, uh, I see Scout going down to one and sacrifice staying at one, just so the deck's consistency just completely. All right, so next card that they have is Dante Trower of the Burning Abyss. This would make Burning Abyss rely more on other strategies aside from just summoning Dante, Dante consistently, because they that's literally all they do is Dante, Dante, Dante. Uh, Burning Abyss I've talked a couple of times, but they've also not done much. So I could easily see Konami just allowing them to squeeze by, you know, especially with this last, uh, uh, their last set and cross souls. Uh, I can easily see them just not getting hit at all, you know. Uh, no Burning Abyss card has got hit, you know, it has support cards like Tour Guide, but no Burning Abyss card has got hit. And uh, especially with their cross soul support, I doubt they're going to get hit this list, you know. Uh, they haven't been really doing well enough to warrant getting hit. You know, they they kind of unraveled with the consistency that Tour got hit did definitely hurt, and uh, I think that Konami will allow them to live for one more list. You know, they're gonna allow them to be fine this list, and then after their hits of the other decks such as you know Satellers and Necros and Klees and Shadows and Burning Abyss go on hit, especially since uh, you know their Cross Souls deck and their TCG deck. Uh, they're probably going to allow them to skip on this list and see what they do next format. And then if they do something next format, that's when they're going to get hit. So like I said, I wouldn't be surprised if any uh, no cards in the running list get hit this time. I wouldn't be surprised. And then uh, for a minute, they have Dragon Green. I talked with uh, this card. They said, what you're going to you didn't do anything with Dragon Green. I won, so it's pretty likely Konami's going to move this card up. I have, I have no precedence. Like I said, I will go ahead and do a part two. In part one, I will have Dragon Ravine not move anywhere and still be at one. Because I have no precedence of it. And I will talk about that when I do the part one balance prediction. But uh, could it move to three? Yeah, sure. But do I have any presence of it? No. So it's not really worth the prediction. Because like I said, even when OCG banned the Dragon Rivers, they still uh, kept... Uh, Ravine at one because they have Ravine at one and they've had Ravine at one when Dragon Roller. So, uh, you know, maybe they just wanted to go ahead and test it. Maybe on their upcoming list in July they'll go ahead and put Dragon Ravine up three and then we'll copy suit. But for right now, I I can't predict Dragon Ravine moving up to three. So uh, there we go. There is Omega Chaos. Uh, we still have time for one more. So uh, we'll go ahead and do Team Ninja. As you guys know, Team Ninja as a big supporter of my channel. Uh, I appeared on their channel. They appeared on mine. And, uh, yeah, they're, like, pretty much one of my partner channels. So, uh, they didn't really put a list, but just a lot. Of, they just said a whole bunch of things to one, which I'm totally in agreement. So, uh, we'll go ahead and go down there real quick, and then we'll go ahead and call the video. So, once again, uh, lots of people here. Lots of people in the comment section are in agreement of a lot of things. So, like I said, with you guys combined in with my list, we pretty much got it. So, first they said, uh, should I construct the one? I already talked about that. Uh, they said fusion. They didn't specify which reason. Like I said, I would like Shadal. El I, I would like Shadal fusion, but like I said, it'll probably be El Shadal fusion. Uh, next, they have Mind Crush the one. I already talked about that. Mind Crush should be the one. Uh, Chair the one. Uh, Sovereignty. So yes, I agree that Sovereignty the one. Uh, Brio the one. I'm assuming that you're talking about Necros or Bionic because we're not talking about the Synchro Bionic, right? <laughs> it's funny that Necros Bionic and uh, the Synchro Bionic are like the most powerful cards. It's just ridiculous, but uh, yeah. Uh, Necros Bionic to one. I agree, and then Unicorn to one. I agree as well. So, uh, there we go. That's all, literally, all Team Ninja said. And, you know, I'm in agreement as long as, you, you know, I'm in agreement with everything that you say there. So, uh, there you go. All right. And, uh, like I said, we have time for one more. So, we'll go ahead and do Oblivion Duelist X or uh, Demetrius real quick. Real quick. So, uh, starting off, he says, uh, ban the gym. I agree. I agree. Like I said, if there's anything that should be in, it should be the gym. And uh, limit both stars, but limit both seraphs. I don't think that's really necessary. As I said, copy off of OCG and precedence. Uh, really, you only have to hit sovereignty. Uh, if you hit a uh, scepter, really, you're just like by limiting uh, sovereignty, the engine's dead. Like no one's gonna do you know triple uh, uh, scepter in one sovereignty. Definitely not. And like I said, copy off of OCG precedence off OCG. They already have sovereignty in one. Uh, there's really no reason to go ahead and hit Scepter uh, if Sovereignty is at one, because you're not even going to do the engine anymore. Well, you could still make a, a Star Seraph deck with, you know, you could probably going to need triple uh, 
a uh, scepter with uh, a pure star seraph deck. So I think that just sovereignty to one will be enough. All right. Next, he says possibly MST to one to promote Galaxy Cyclone. I don't think they're gonna go that far. You know, uh, they're probably just gonna leave it alone. They're like, hey, you know, Galaxy Cyclone is here. If you wanna go ahead and get it, more power to you. But I don't think they're gonna hit MST just to promote Galaxy Cyclone. That would be kind of a dick move. I don't think Konami's gonna do that. You know, especially since MST's been falling off as of late. You know, there's really no reason to hit it. It's not like in the past. You know, especially with you know Heavy Storm, us not having a Heavy Storm, and us not having. Uh, you know, like a giant trainer or something like that. They're just like, you know, stick with the three MSTs. You're not getting heavy storm though. So, all uh, right. Next, you said hashtag free my nigga Artrine. It was unjustifiably hit, and honestly, despite your hate for the deck, you gotta admit it did nothing in that format. What the fuck are you talking about? It won worlds. It won worlds. Like that. That's like the ultimate accomplishment in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh. Winning worlds. So, what do you mean that it did nothing? It was unjustifiably hit. It's simple. You win worlds, you get hit. It's as simple as that, you know? And I don't think they're going to move our train for a long, 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 long time. I mean, look how long it took them to um, move cards in uh, Glad Beast. Like, no, 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 no. Our train, you're going to be sitting that limited for a long, 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 long time. So enjoy your time on the limited list. Like I said, you want to wait. You want to be like, well, you know, I'm, I'm not that good anymore. You know, let me go ahead and just uh, hop back in the line. You got to you get to the back of the line. Shit. You, you got a couple of people ahead of you. Fucking wind-ups are ahead of you when it comes to, you know, being released. So, no. <laughs> no. Archfiend, stay limited. All right. Next, you said, uh, heavy to one toes with bad unless they can fit that starlight road. Uh, like I said, I have no precedence when it comes to heavy storm. Uh, like I said, if they were going to do anything, they'd probably just copy off of OCG and bring Harpy Thunder Duster. But I even doubt that as well. Uh, I definitely think that. They're probably just going to keep heavy, keep all them cards, and they're just going to stick with, you know, multiple MSTs and multiple Galaxy Cyclones, that individual pop, that one for one. Uh, this doesn't seem like Konami likes the multiple wiping, and at this point, I'm just used to not having it. I'm, I'm kind of done setting heavy as well. So, uh, there you go. There's Oblivion Duels X, and it seems like uh, Soul Banana as well replied to Oblivion Duels X, so I'll quickly go down what they said, and, uh, then we'll call it a video. So, uh, they said, uh, Heavy 2 1 is a mistake. Shadals and Necro players do not need a Denko Seca. That does not need to be normal. And I said, Denko Seca is a powerful card, but I have no precedence in that card either. Uh, once again, it just seems like kind of an anti meta, kind of anti uh, backer kind of card. You know, it does cost you normal summon to 17 beer, so uh, you know, I have nothing against Denko Seca. But uh, Heavy, on the other hand, you know. Like I said, Heavy just seems like a not appropriate card. Uh, next I said, I agree with Archery, but Komani's Com stance on instant power out of nowhere is bad. I'm not sure. Although Soul Charge got hit. Like I said, uh, Soul Charge is probably going to get hit uh, despite Infernity's topping with world, but, you know, it was one of the key cards, but no. Archery, stay at one. Like I said, I don't get, I don't understand what you're saying. It, it unjustifiably got hit. And I'm, sorry, I'm not hating on that, I just don't get your argument. Like, you say, unjustifiably hit and did nothing, but it won Worlds. Like, that's, like I said, ultimate accomplishment in Yu-Gi-Oh. Any deck that wins Worlds gets hit, simple as that. So, uh, congratulations on winning Worlds. Here's your reward. You get hit. Alright, and then uh, they said, um, MST will never go to one. It barely sees any play right now. You know, like I said, it's not one of the most popular cards. Is it the most popular card in all the Yu-Gi-Oh? Yes, but is it popular right now? Not really. So, uh... I doubt it. I doubt that they're going to go ahead and put MST to 1 just from the Galaxy Cyclone. Because there have been cards in the past. They could have hit MST to 1 to promote Night Beam. They could have been, but they didn't. So, uh, no. MST is going to stay. Alright, so there we go. There is part 2. So, we still got a handful of comments to go to uh, go down through. And, uh, yeah. So, we'll be back tomorrow with part 3. So, thank you all the people who took the time to comment. And if you haven't commented already, you can go ahead and comment in this comment section. Or you can go to... Uh, the original video in comment there but right now i'm just looking at the original video that i'll eventually read the comments and get to the comments in part one part two part three however long it takes like i said hopefully it doesn't take more than four part parts i'm hoping not but if it does then yeah we'll figure that out when it comes to it but we got a nice chunk done so i hope that you guys enjoyed part two so thanks for watching thanks for all support and i will see you guys tomorrow with part three uh using uh burning abyss all right people thanks for watching Thank <laughs> you.